D. Nelson. Join the meeting. Give me a second, fast. I'm going to start the music. Good morning. Are you doing good? Good, good. All right, all right. I'm doing pretty good for an old, old, old man. All right. You know, you're still young. Well, take your time. <laughs> take your time. Take your time. Okay. I'm trying Pastor. to get older. I hear you, Pastor. All right. You try to get to where I am. I'm trying my best to, Pastor. Right. I ain't rushing at me. Actually, trying to do it all day. Oh, yeah. When I'm muted, that means I can, you can't hear me. Huh? I hear you. All right. I got you. I got you then. We are ready. We are ready, huh? Yeah, I'm waiting on brother. He got some. He'll be having. He'll be within just a second, Pastor. He's having some issues with his computer. Huh? He's having some issues with his computer. Uh -huh. He'll be starting in just a second. All right, all right. We gonna. We got the hope. That's right. Watch it, Joe. <laughs> I don't know who this is. Ninety, ninety six, seventy four. Four two four. I don't know who that is.
selection, then we're going to get damp and get ready for the scripture. We're going to move on. Come on, let's get excited in the house of God today. Oh, come on. Say, oh. Say, Lord, you are 
Somebody out there who know God is good, I want to just wave your hand and say, in spite of me, God is still good. Amen. In fact, everybody, he woke me up early this morning. Early. Give me another chance, and I know he is good. Uh, Deb, prepare yourself to get for a scripture. John, if you're listening, um, get ready to pray and then stand, give us another selection, and we're going to get ready to move forward. Before we do that, let me thank the Lord for 
those persons who on yesterday uh, taking care of a situation for me with Will Jenkins Jr. Stand there and let me uh, uh, especially give thanks and praise to you, man, for being so good. I heard that you did a super good job. I thank the Lord for you and helping me out in that particular area. The rest of you who were there, let me thank the Lord for you. Dr. Max Gardner and others, let me thank the Lord for you who were so kind in sharing with me and, and, and homegoing of the son. All right, thank you again for being so good to me. Uh, those of you, uh, I hope you kind of have, we understand my situation, my predicament, but I'm thankful to the Lord that time or still as well as they are with me. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Brother, Brother Dimp, will you give us a scripture? And as I said to us all the time, what the songwriter said, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in his sight. This is really the day that the Lord has made. So somehow, let's find something to rejoice about. Get them frowns off your face. Let's rejoice and be happy in the Lord for his goodness. Dimp, give us a a, script, a scripture at this time. John, get ready to pray for us. I will be reading from Psalms 121, which state, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill, for which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen and amen. 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 Let us bow. Father, my God, we come before thee this morning. We bow down here to humble and submissive hearts. Yes. First of all, giving you all the praise and glory. Thanking yes, you for, for last night's rest and our early rising this morning. For we know it wasn't yes. an alarm clock that awoke us this morning. But it was your amazing grace mm -hmm. and mercy. Father God, we ask right now that you would bless everyone that's in attendance of this service this morning. Father God, bless each family individually as well as collectively. Father God, touch their hearts and their minds, open their minds that they might receive this word. Father God, we just ask that you would bless and continue to bless each and every one of us. Father God, we ask that you would look down on those that are bereaved today. Father yes, God, Lord. we know that you are a comforter in time of need, and we ask that you would comfort those that are bereaved, Father God. We ask right now, God, that you would touch the man of God that's going to expound on your word, giving teaching power that he might preach and all thoroughness that we might get an understanding that will make our lives better. Yes. Father God, we ask that you would bless the associate pastor Stanley. Uh, continue to anoint him, Father God, in his works. Father God, we just ask that you would bless those in the prisons, in the nursing homes, in the hospitals. Father God, touch those in government. Father God, tenderize those hearts in the Congress and the Senate. Father God, tenderize the, the heart of the president, Father God, that he might make this transition smoothly. Father God, we know yeah. that you're able to do anything but fail. Father mm -hmm. God, we ask that you would bless every church that's open in your yes. name this thank morning. Lord. Father God, we Lord. thank you right now. Father God, most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus, yes, Lord. who that you gave, that he might die, yes, that we might yes. live. And it's yes. in his mighty name, I pray. Jesus in the name. name of Jesus, amen. 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 Amen.
help me help me do just a little bit of amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me yeah i don't know about you but i admit that i was once lost uh -huh. but thank god i am now found yeah yeah yes and if you are you in the predicament with me, you know that God can still do that for us. Yeah, yes, he can. Amen. Yes, Amen. he can. Amen. Just help me. Amaze and grace. How sweet the Rich, yeah. I want thus far. Yes, Lord. Thank and you. If Lord. by chance I see tomorrow, it'll be grace. In the midst of this coronavirus, this invisible enemy to us, we are ought to be thankful that the Lord has still allowed us to be in the land of the living. Don't take it for granted that you've been so good, but I'd rather give God the praises for his goodness. Open your Bibles to Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, one of his better churches. Chapter one. Let's look at verses 21. 22 and 23, chapters 1, 21, 22, and 23. Paul says, verse 21, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I should choose, I want not. For I'm in a street betwixt two, having a desire to be with Christ, which is far better. 24. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Let me thank the Lord for my sweet member, Sylvia. I see her on here today with us, and thank the Lord for us. I want to talk to us just for a few minutes about a situation that many of us don't think of too much of. But life is what you make it. Don't run around accusing nobody for what you don't have or could have had because life is what you make it. Today, let me, if you would, as pastor, set before you an issue 
I believe is important. If we are to survive as a people, and in the midst of this pandemic as a church family, we have before us as a church family, a golden opportunity to set in motion, which could be one of the greatest churches in the city of Shreveport. An opportunity to create a holy atmosphere where the Holy Ghost can abide in the midst of God's people. Let us, new inspiration, seize that moment. Can I get a witness here? Seize that moment, remembering that 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, put it in a kind of emphasis where if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. Don't nobody like to accept this. And turn from thy wicked ways. Then shall I hear from heaven, forgive thy sins, and heal thy land. Our land is sick from the White House to the church house and all of the houses in between. Never before have we witnessed stuff like we see today. Amen. Now I believe we need to take this opportunity given to us by the Lord to be the church, the best church that we can be for the Lord. I'm learning Life can only be what you make it. Amen. If you miss it or mess it up, this opportunity that God has given you, really, it is nobody's fault but yours. Don't go around talking about what they won't let me do. You're the one that mess it up. Can I get a witness here? Therefore, since God has left me as pastor in charge, I plan on trying to make the New Israel Baptist Church as biblical as I possibly can, knowing God Almighty, that there are going to be some who are going to disagree with me. But life, church, can going to be what you're making. Now, I've lived, couldn't say this a few years ago, I've lived long enough to know that that If you keep on trying, you're going to find out that life is only what you make. And you got to learn how to make some sacrifices. And life is never going to be worth living for anyone or anybody unless you find out that it's going to take some living to find out life is worth living. Tell me anything that you have that's worth anything. And I'm going to show you some people who made some sacrifices to get it where it is. If you have a home, you work hard to try to get there. If you don't have one, don't blame nobody. That's a decision that you made. Whatever achievement that you have in life, don't blame anybody. Whether it's to go to school, to try to have an education, or work for common labor for the rest of your life, 
Don't blame anybody. That's a decision that you made. If you decide to drop out of school, don't go around accusing anybody. That's a decision. That, and I've tried to say it to our young folk. Young folk, especially those who are members of the newest recent church, if you want to be somebody or be a nobody, that's nobody's fault but yours. You can be somebody special for God if you want to be. But you need to remember, life is going to be only what you make it to be. If there is any one thing that is wrong in many of our lives, it is too many of us going around complaining about the hard knocks of life, and especially when it comes to the church and being a Christian. But really, when we stare reality face to face, Life really is what you make it. Whether you decide to go to school, try to be somebody, drop out and be a nobody, become a drug pusher or a, a drug addict, it's nobody's fault but yours, you're the one that have to make up your mind that you really want to be somebody. Life can be good to you, or life can be fat for you. Really, it all depends upon you. Can I get a witness here? Jesus tells us in John 10.10, 10, Satan has come to rob, to steal, and to kill. But I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Really, it depends upon you. You have within you the potential of excelling to be whatever you want to be or to be a nobody. Can I get a witness here? Then when I see us, who God has blessed, allow Satan to steal and destroy us and eventually kill us, I tell us it is really nobody's fault but ours. I found out the other day, life is what you make it. No, not all of us, especially my color. In fact, very few of us, if there are any of us, who are born with a silver spoon in your mouth. But I've come to tell you that life is what you make it. Amen. I can finally hear Paul says, now some of, the, some of you have not had hard knocks of life. I was born during the pressure of something almost like we have now. But I made up my mind that I wanted to be somebody. Now, if you don't want to be nobody, that's exactly where you are going. If you don't want to be a Christian, can't nobody make you be a Christian. You're going to have to decide for yourself that I'm going to try to live for. That's why Paul said, for me to live is Christ. And for me to die is gain. You hold within you the power to make it what you want it to be. God has entrusted into us you care to make it all that you want it to be, or to make it a great, tower, respectable, God-fearing king of kings. Oh, you can if you will. 
live a sinful, low life preaching, life for creating. You and you only hold the power in your hand. God has entrusted within you. Can't you hear? Somebody says, Lord, 90 some, thou has been our living place in all generations. Before the mountain were brought forth, or even thou had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Can I get a witness here? Can I get a witness here? If, Amen. if you want life, you can have it. If you want to live life to your fullness, you can have it. You can take this gracious opportunity of, of God's love and be all that you want to be. Or if you wish, you can be a great soldier of the cross for him who is the light of the world. You can be one of God's greatest witness in this sin trying world, making history with and for the one of whom God has given you this chance to be whatever you want to be. Nobody can stop you from being what you want to be if you want to be. Now, the names of the names that are written in the Lamb Book of Life, God's Glory Book in Hebrews 11, tells us about Enoch, a man who walked and talked with God. In a sinful world, a man like Noah, like Noah, a priest to hunted. Over on his Abraham, who was called by God, Sarah, Rahab the Hollot. And I've lived long enough to know that life is what you make it. Can I get a witness here? I'm a witness. There were those who said maybe about the same thing about me and they said about you, that you wasn't going to be nothing. But let me tell you something. If you want to be somebody, you can be somebody. I'm glad to say maybe I'm not all that you thought about, but I'm a child of the king. No, no. Don't you allow nobody to tell you what side of the tracks of the neighborhood that you were born in can keep you from being all that God wants you to be. Our 44th president of the United States of America, Hussein Obama. Daddy came from Africa. Mother was of another race. For a moment, Obama almost dropped out of school, went back to school and became to be the head of the class. A young senator in Illinois decided I'm going to take a chance and run for the president of the United States of America. Folk thought he had lost his ever-loving mind. But I mean, the record is that Obama become the 44th president of the United States of America. And it was all because of what he wanted to be. You too can be somebody if you want to be. Yes, life and living really is what you make it. Yes, you can be recognized as a child of status, a child of God, or you can become a nobody in the world of sin, like a man by the name of Judas, who betrayed our Lord into the hands of his enemy. Life is what you make it. Yes, I believe the man of the text 
is a living legacy that life is what you make it. For he no doubt would have never made history as one of the Lord's greatest servants had he chose the Pharisee road. But because he made the right turn in Acts chapter 9, here he stands as a witness of the text telling us in verse 29, or verse 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Now let me hear up and tell you, one, life makes some choices. Can't you hear Moses saying, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, see, I have said before you this day, life, death, good, evil. You can choose evil and die, or you can choose life and live. It's all dependent on what you become. I'm glad that the Lord God Almighty has set some choices before us. If you decide to live for Jesus, or if you decide to take the path of destruction, life will be what you make it. Can't you hear Matthew saying, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, narrow is the path that leadeth to righteousness. Many choose the wide way, but that's a decision that you make in life. Yes, I'm glad that God Almighty, that I have sense enough to know that the Lord places before us the life that we decide to live. Then he gives us the strength to live as we please. God Almighty, can't you hear the Lord saying, he will allow it to rain upon the just, just as he does the unjust. Oh, what a mighty God we serve, who allows us to make life what we want it to be. I'm so glad that this same God tells us the consequences of life we choose. Can't you hear him saying in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life is eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. I can hear Moses even saying, choose life and live or even and die. That's your choice for life will be what you make. I'm glad that the Lord God Almighty gives all of us the same chance. Can you hear Peter saying in Acts 10, 34, I perceive then that God, our true God, is no respect of a person. Let me tell you that it is written in God's Holy wood, that life is what you make it. Look at Ruth, the Moabite, who came from a bad job, but she decided, told her mama Naomi, your God gonna be my God. And uh, wherever you live, I'm gonna live. And because of this decision she made, down to the line, uh, came a man by the name of David, from a man by the name of David, came a man by the name of Jesus. Look at God Almighty, if you would, Esther. Can't you hear us saying, if I perish, let me perish, but life is going to be what you make it. Look at Abraham. Uh, yes, sir, uh, and, and chapter 12 says uh, he left his home town and uh, start walking in it, a man who walked and talked to, with the Lord God Almighty will tell you that life is what you make it. Yeah, even Brother Paul will tell you that life is what you make it. I can hear him saying 
it according to my expectation uh, uh, and my hope in uh, nothing. I shall not be ashamed, but but that with all boldness as always. So now also Christ shall magnify, be magnified in my body, whether it be for life or death. And for me to live is Christ, and for me to die is gain. I tell you that life is what you make it. Yet I decided one day in the year of 1955 that I was going to make something worthwhile out of me and the life that the Lord God Almighty had given me that have been, yeah, God Almighty, some dark days uh, since that time. Uh, yeah, there have been some ups and downs uh, since that time. God Almighty, there have been some so-called friends uh, in my life. Uh, there have been, God Almighty, some high mountains and uh, some sharp curves, uh, some ups and downs in my life. But let me tell you today, uh, by the grace of God, uh, I've come a long way and I've made it by the grace of God. And I can tell you that, sir, by the grace of God, uh, you too can make it. Somebody just might be wondering how, yes, sir, I'm so glad that you asked me that question. Let me tell you how you can do it by living a, a dedicated life for Christ. Jesus, our Lord, uh, Paul, uh, the man of the text, will tell you in Galatians uh, 2.20, I am uh, crucified with Christ, uh, never the let I live yet. It's not I that live, but it's Christ that's alive in me. And the life I now live, uh, I live because of him uh, who loved me uh, and gave uh, is a life for me. Do I have anybody out there can identify to your word? Yeah, I want to leave behind me a trail of endurance that somebody will know with the sure. Yeah, that life is what you make it. Yes, sir. And I want to tell you, by the grace of God, I am what I am. I tell you, I'm so glad that life is what you make it for the Lord God Almighty to set before each of us life and death and allow each of us the opportunity, God Almighty, to be all that we could be for what the Lord, what, what the God wanted to make. I made up my mind that I'm going to hold on to God on changing hands. Do I have anybody listening to me today who made up your mind? You're going to do a U-turn uh, in your life and make something great out of your life. Uh, nobody but you can do that for you but you. Uh, yes, sir, I've decided that I'm going to have somebody, make somebody know that I know a man uh, by the name of Jesus who stepped from behind the curtains uh, of eternity, came into a dark world of sin. They thought he was a nobody, but I can hear him. Paul said when they accepted him, for me to live is Christ and, and to die is gone. He came into the world, the book says that he came to his own and his own received him not, but as many as received him to them, he gave power to become the sons of God. I'm so glad today to tell you that I know him who is the author and the finisher of my faith. And he, all right, I ought to have one or two people out there who know that he's all right out there. One or two out there who know that the, you tried the God for yourself and you know that life can be what you make it. I'm so glad that I know him who was born of a virgin by the name of Mary. Yes, sir. And who became uh, the author and finish of my faith. Maybe that's why Paul said, because once he accepted him, he said, as for me to live uh, is Christ uh, and to die is gain. And because of life is what you make it, I made up my mind uh, to live eternity with him uh, who stepped from behind the curtains uh, of eternity and came into a dark world of sin, died on the cross of Calvary, uh, died, but he would stay dead, uh, died, but early on his Thursday morning, uh, something uh, unforgettable happened. Uh, he 
got up out of a dusty grave and declared, all power is in my hand. I can destroy, but I will defend. Stayed around here for about 40 days and caught a cloud and went back home to his father. And one of these days, I don't know when, but he said, I'll be back again. And when he come back, I made up my mind. Uh, I'm going to go home to live with him uh, over there in a city like one I've never seen before where the streets are paved with gold and the gates are pearl. The, the walls are jasper. The, the tree over there that bears uh, 12 manners of fruit and the leaves on the tree, they're even good for the healing of the nation. I'm going to be in that city where God shall wipe all tears from my eyes. No more dying, no more crying. I'm going to live with him who died that I might live. Somebody's listening to me today who perhaps is halfway turned around. But let me tell you something. Life is what you make it. And if you don't make nothing out of your life, don't you go around blaming nobody. Life is what you make it. Let me just throw this in. I was a high school dropout. My dad tried to get me to go to school, but I was a dropout. I told my dad I could make it. But when I found out, every time I tried to get an upper grade job, I found out, that's one of the first thing my boys would blow my face, you didn't graduate. I said, I'm going back to school. Went back to school as an adult, graduated and went to college. Let me tell you something. Life is what you make it. If you don't want to be nobody, you are not going to be. Yes, let me tell you something else. When you got to pay your bills and you, and your tuition fees yourself, you wish you had gone on. And you only appreciate it when you had to make some sacrifices for it. Can I get a witness here? Somebody listen to me and they know it. I'm right about it. Amen. If you can make it. <laughs> If you really want to make it. Yes, you can. But life is going to only be what you make it. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Somebody, somebody, somebody listen to me now who have been procrastinating about going back to school. You dropped out. But baby, let me tell you. They got a little school. <clears throat> yeah, I am a 30-year-old boy set up in a classroom with teenagers. <laughs> But it's the decision that you make. Yes, yes. You can make it if you try. I got a few folks listening to me who perhaps are high school dropouts. They have a done education. You can go back and do it if you want to. It's only going to be what, and I'm not going to tell you something. It ain't. It's not going to be easy. But you can make it. If you try, same thing applies in being a child of God. I was thinking about my own life in the year 52, three, four church. I was the Methodist, I grew up in Methodist, Bethlehem a church. I used to walk past it, but I was on my way to Parlor Street where the happening was. Finally, I made up my mind that I was going to live for Christ. And if you decide to make your living for Christ, the opportunities are unlimited. You can be a great soldier for the Lord, but it all depends upon you. Might be somebody, listen to my weak voice, who really want to accept Christ as that person saying, and don't know it. But Paul will say to so us that God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Give us that chance to shout with Paul, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If you are there, wherever you are, and you want to make that decision, all you've got to do right now is just tell the Lord, Lord, come into my life. Come into my life. Change my level of living. 
and I'm going to live for you. Don't try to be able to explain it all. Just accept him, and God will open some doors for you. Amen. Amen. Let me also say to us, thank the, thank the Lord again for the brethren who was on yesterday, who was so kind and helping me. Thank you, brethren, for sharing with life. You're going to be what you make it. And I'll tell you something. The more you give, the more God is going to give to you. Amen. If you really want to be somebody, you're going to have to learn how to make some sacrifices in life. That everything you do won't be for you. Be that you can be able to help somebody else. Amen. God bless us. Have a smile upon us. And let me ask you again to be kind. Send us the gifts. Sister Brooks said we didn't do too well last week. Let's uh, send our tithe to the New Inspiration Baptist Church. 3702. Full stop box, 3702. Shreveport, Louisiana. 71133. Help me. Bless me, the ties that bind our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of can dread mine. Is life to that above all man? One more time, and I would that you could even commit this verse to memory. Verse 21 of chapter 1. Book of Philippians says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. Thank you so kindly. Thank the Lord again for those of us who are listening. You can, if you want to be somebody, you can be somebody. Mm -hmm. It all depends upon you. And if you don't want to be nobody, please forgive me for doing this. No need of self, for wasting our money sending you to college when you don't want to make, make nothing of yourself. You're not going to do nothing. Go down there and go wherever you're going. Use up the tuition fees and don't mess around and become a dropout. Or get almost like I was, get put on probation. <laughs> for not doing what they told you to do. So life is going to be what you make it. Thank you. Thank you again. I know I'm being redundant. Thank you, sons of the house, for being so kind on yesterday to help me. Bless you. God bless you. Love you. Hi, Amen. Pastor. We love you. Thank you, Miss Tanya. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Sylvia. Thank Good you, morning Ms. to Sylvia. everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen, amen. Bless everybody. Thank you, Brother John. Bless you. Bless you. Love you, Pastor. I want to tell Reverend Stanley and Reverend O'Neill, they did an excellent job yesterday, Pastor. So just oh, so right. you know. <laughs> thank you, 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 thank you. Amen. Life is going to be what you make it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you never know what you can't do until you try to do it. <laughs> All right. Amen. Thank you so kindly. Bless us. Bless us. See you. See you, Miss Dorothy's Dorothy's and Dyes and Mr. Ellen, Sam Jr., Sam Jr., Sam Jr. Thank you so kindly for being uh, with us today. Amen. Amen. Miss Sylvia, tell that boy that I, that's his name. That's named Jerry. That I say, you better act right. I know he can hear me tell me, you better act right. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Christopher, you better yes, write, boy. Yes, sir. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Life is what you Love y'all. Hey, Love you, too. Love you too. Now, if you stop, go back, it's going to be difficult now because you're going to have to take care of Tanisha, that old ugly boy. But you can make it if you want to. Bless you. God oh, bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you.